Hi, my name's Andy Ely. I'm a senior funeral director with G. Seller Independent Funeral Directors. And we've been serving bereaved families since 1910. I'm sure you're all well aware there's lots and lots of different myths, misconceptions and taboos around what happens within the funeral profession. So we've decided to put this series of podcasts together to try and dispel some of those myths and of course answer any questions that you may have. So please do like, share and subscribe and send those questions. Send them to liftingthelid at gseller.co.uk and we will do our best to answer them for you. It genuinely is our family caring for your family. Today is a topic, um, I'm with my co-host Joe. Oh. Um, we have, we're talking families, we're talking families in conflict, uh, which is quite, quite prevalent, isn't it? I think there's a, a relatively recent survey by the National Association of Funeral Directors, and they state that amongst 4,000 um, funeral homes, nearly two thirds, that's 57%, they've had conflict to deal with, which is actually quite a big number. So we'll get it more and more, don't we? Um, sort of people come in and there's there's some sort of conflict in the family for whatever reason. Um, and it is can be slightly detrimental to arranging a funeral, can't it? Certainly can make things a bit tricky. Absolutely. Um, We're kind of becoming mediators in some way, aren't we, really? Absolutely, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, we sort of have a general rule that we'll only take instruction from a single person when we're going to do funeral arrangements. Um, for the simple reason that, of course, if we're taking lots of instructions for lots of different people, it's going to affect how that funeral comes together. Um not always for the better of the the final outcome of the funeral. No, you can too 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 many cooks spoil the broth. I guess is the sort of a, a bit of a connection there. But um, yeah, I mean, in, in respect to those funeral arrangements, this 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 challenge that we have sometimes is you know these could be split families. It could be families that have been perhaps even forced together to put those funeral arrangements together. So it's something that there may have been a historical rift that we kind of have to bridge that gap to come to a means to an end, really, to put this funeral together. Such a difficult thing to do. Um, I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty over the deceased wishes as well. You know, are they getting it right? And that can cause a lot of conflict. You might have one family member with their opinion, another with their opinion. Yeah, and of course, a funeral quite often you know, brings people together in such a way they might not have spoken together for a long time, as you said, um, but all of a sudden they're forced into a single room um, you know, with someone like yourself or me, um, and faced with all these questions that all of a sudden they've got to have some sort of compromise on, um, whereas before they've not been able to compromise about, you know, much at all. Um, I mean, one of these questions could be, how's it paid for? Who's paying? Yeah. Where's the money coming from? Huge things to consider for a family that aren't particularly getting on well together. Mm. So how do we deal with it, Joe? I mean, we sit there, we're in a room, we're faced with this family. You've already mentioned that uh, we we tend to take instruction from one individual. Mm. But sometimes things things can escalate, can't things they? Things can boil over. I've had people storm out of a, a ranging room before, um, go and have five minutes, go and perhaps uh, go outside for a minute, or they've even gone to another room, and I've gone to deal with them separately to go have a bit of a chat to them and, and just try and refocus that there's a common goal here, even if you don't necessarily get along with the people that are in front of you, you know that person as long as the people are in that room they're there to look after the person that's passed away as we are and that is the common goal and and actually you tend to find or i've found that when people are starting to focus on that then things start coming together a little bit easier. yeah absolutely i mean some of these uh, responses they could be something so simple it could be a choice of music yeah um I've, uh, we quite often hear that I've heard the phrase, someone's going to kick off at the funeral service so many times. And to be fair, we've had um, in the crematorium, I've had, uh, oh, it can only be described as a really frosty divide. So I've had one half of the family seated on one side of the crematorium, the other half of the family seated on the other. Mm. Um, and to be fair, most of it is a, a common goal, isn't it? We're, we're there to look after the wishes of the deceased. And most people would hear to that, you know. And you tend to find that despite people saying, you know, they're worried that someone's going to kick off, as you said, you know, yeah. at the funeral service. Um, you know, nine and a half times out of ten people are more respectful than that. Um, very rarely have I ever had it where someone has, you know, shouted or, or done anything at a funeral service. You know, normally you sit there, you get through the service. When you leave, you might never have to sit down with these people ever again. You can leave, but at least you've done what's right for your, your dad or your mum or your sister, you know, however, um, whoever the person is that we're looking after. Um 
I say there's very rarely ever any major conflict at a funeral that I've had to deal with. Yeah, I've, I've been asked in the past if I could have a, a bouncer stood on the door um, to prevent an individual coming into the room. Mm. Um, it might be worth noting that a crematorium, it's a public space. Uh, we, we can't really stop people coming in, can we? It's, it's... No, I've, I've had situations before where, you know, if there's a particular person, as an, the, you know, my client hasn't particularly wanted in, um, I've had conversations with them outside, which I said, look, They've asked that you not to go in there. I can't stop you from going in, but I've perhaps asked that you maybe just sit at a seat towards the back or so, yeah. or, you know, perhaps further away. Try not perhaps to interact with the, you know, with that particular part of the family. Um, and that's that's sort of helped things before. But it can be, let's say, as you're going through funeral arrangements, it can be the smallest thing, can't it? That can perhaps say you said about music, but perhaps order a service as well. You know, how things are put together, what pictures yeah, going on the front of the service sheet. You know, it, everything can be a little bit contentious if there is, a bit of bad blood between people. So um, I mean, when you talk about communication uh, within a normal environment, um, obviously someone sends a message to you, you receive the message, um, and then sort of feed back and get, get it 100% confirmed. Situation within a funeral, we, we've, we've got grief to deal with, we've, we've got bereavement, we've got lots of lots of heightened emotions, and that, that kind of amplifies everything. Yeah. So it, it can be really quite difficult for us. We, we need to actively listen to what the family are saying. Yeah and ensure that we are doing exactly what their wishes are. The, the slightest bit of miscommunication, it, it, it can have huge effects. You know, if you've got a family at rift, something so small could, mm. could potentially erupt. They're not necessarily small, but especially in regards to chapel of rest. Someone wants to come to the chapel, and then if someone puts a restriction on chapel, so again, we take our instructions from a single person. Absolutely. So if that single person was to say to me, you know, we want to restrict who can come to the chapel to come and spend some time with their loved one, then we've got a system in place that deals with that. Um, so for ourselves, it's a business card, um, business card uh, uh, theory, isn't it? And that we'll sign a business card, we'll give a certain amount of those business cards to the client, they'll distribute to people. And then when people come into our chapel, they will pass us the signed business card. And that is how you gain access to go to our chapel and rest. Absolutely. Uh, but it's very strict, isn't it, of course? I mean, I always say, Please bear in mind, even to our client, that it's probably only myself that knows who that client is, yeah. because somebody else in the business, you know, you might not have seen the person who my, who, who that is, you know, um, if they haven't got their card, they won't be allowed to go to the chapel. Yeah, and we, we make that make them a really yeah. that that is a point we drive home, isn't it? Make everyone incredibly aware that that's the case, just to try and avoid some of that conflict and that potential of um, something happening to to ourselves as colleagues yeah. and, and the colleagues that we work with. Mm. And. Uh, there's different, um, say, I've had people saying they're going to go to the newspapers and all sorts over Oh, there. yeah, yeah. He very rarely ever any comes of anything, fortunately. I say, at the end of the day, um, if we're surmising things, you know, generally, by the time we get to the funeral service, I think people aim towards a common goal. Yeah. Um, I think the only occasion I've had a, a, a potential cancellation of a funeral service, um, that there, there were two executors involved, um, and... It was pointed out quite rightly that two executives they have to meet in a, in, in a common ground, and yeah. and and my response to them was that that's fine, but it's not really my position to mediate. Yeah. Um, if if you can't come to some form of compromise, I will do exactly what you want me to do. Yeah. But if you can't come to that compromise, then perhaps that's something for a court of law to yeah. decide. And let's get that resolution in place before you even come to us. Yeah. Our perspective, really, we're looking after the wishes of your loved one, yeah. and that that's our primary focus yeah i agree brilliant i think it, before we close i think it'll be it's quite important to say that um you know what having a plan in place um uh, letting yeah. your family know um what your wishes are as an individual uh, can kind of resolve this so a prepaid plan or even just jotting down the funeral wishes it makes it much easier from our perspective as funeral directors. No arguments in the family. There's no all. arguments in the family. And the family absolutely are doing what their loved one wants. And it just makes it so much easier. It's, I think that's quite an important absolutely point to agree. mention. Yeah, agree. Brilliant. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Of course, as always, if there's any questions, any, um, you know, any comments that you wish to make, please do like, share, subscribe. Um, send those questions, send them to liftingthelid at gseller.co.uk and we will do our absolute best to answer them. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.